Okay, hi folks. Here I am giving you a tutorial about how to create local multiplayer in Unreal Engine 5. Now, I've been having a lot of issues with a few versions of Unreal, and so I want to let you know. This tutorial is built in 5.0.3. I've had issues with controllers and the use of controllers in the versions of Unreal since 5.03. And I believe they are now resolved in 5.3. So if you are having problems with this tutorial, try doing it in 5.0.3 or try it in 5.3. Unfortunately, there was a break in the code, I guess, and they didn't get around to fixing it until 5.3. I'll be checking it in 5.3 since that's the new version of the engine and making sure that everything works fine, but let me know if you have any problems as well. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play test. And in order to do this tutorial, I have my mouse and keyboard that allow me to control the player as normal. And then I also have an Xbox controller that's plugged in and that Xbox controller is going to control the same player as well. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate Control D or Command D on the Mac, the player start and move it over a little bit. That is going to allow me so that when I press play, I still only have one, but when I do another step, it, I can spawn a second player at this second location and I will be able to see it on my screen. So to do that, I'm going to go to Open Level Blueprint that opens on another window for me, so I'm just gonna drag it in. And once I have it dragged in, I am going to right click and say, begin event play. Pretty typical standard, standard script module node, excuse me, for when we want something to occur when the game starts. There we go, I'm gonna drag that off and I'm gonna ask it to create local player. And when we create local player, we're going to leave controller ID set to negative one, which is going to allow it to just keep creating uh, and essentially fill the last spot that hasn't been filled with a controller. And we're going to leave spawn player controller checked because this means that the player is going to take possession immediately, that it's going to spawn now. Um, if you leave this unchecked, that's for like when you have a, a player joining a game and they're going to join the next map or the next level on load. Okay, I can now compile this. And if I move this off to the side, if I do a play test, I now have two players that are spawning. The one in the center is the one that I'm controlling. And when I click in up above and I start moving, see the one in the center of the top window I'm controlling and when I use the Xbox controller I'm still controlling the same character so by default the first controller and the mouse and keyboard control the first player the intention here is if you're gonna have multiplayer you're typically gonna have more than one controller which isn't the case for me or for this tutorial so to get around that we go to edit project settings and that is gonna open up this window. And buried in here, if I just search for skip, under local multiplayer is something called skip assigning gamepad to player one. This, if I check it, should mean that player two can be controlled by the gamepad. If you have problems with this, it might be your version of Unreal. They broke this in Unreal 5.1 and it was not fixed until 5.3. Let's try playing this again. There we go. That is the mouse and that is the controller. Fantastic. We now have local multiplayer. But what if you wanna have a game where you have a single person playing and when someone else wants to join, they can push the start button? Well, that's what we're gonna take a look at next. Let me bring in my scripting window again and I'm gonna move this over a little bit. And I am gonna set this up so that we're going to utilize a variable to check if we have a player. So I'm gonna say variable, 
and I am going to insert p to spawn. So this is player to spawn. It's a Boolean, so it's either true or false. So that means that when I set it to true, that there is a player in there, and when there isn't a player, it will be false. I am going to right click in here and I'm going to create a new action for game pad special and game pad special right. And I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to replace event begin play with game pad special right. So when you press that button, it is going to create a new player. I can break my old node connection by holding alt and clicking and I can also select and just hit delete. So now if I compile this and test it, I have full first person playing and when I hit the start button on the controller, the character is going to spawn at one of the open spawn points. Now that's an interesting point here. Let's redo that. So here I am standing in one of the spawn points. So when the controller hits, oh, I have to click in the window to activate the window. Then when I click the special gamepad button, the start button on the X-pad, it automatically generates player two. I have control of player two and player two spawns in any of the open player starts. So. The difference here is if I move off this player start and then I hit start, it could happen at the one that I started in, it could happen at a different one, it could happen at any of the player starts. Now, one of the other things that I could do here is if you wanted to have more than two players, this is gonna involve going a little bit backwards, but Let's take these two, let's duplicate them, and let's rotate them so that they're all sort of looking into the center. Let's bring this back and say, let's bring back event begin play. And what I could do is I could have this repeat essentially just duplicating this. I could make a loop, but this is gonna be faster. Okay, so we get four windows and we get four characters in those four windows, each one being controlled ideally by a different controller. In this case, I don't have those different controllers. And because they're spawned at the beginning of the game all at the same time, they're filling those four spawn points. Okay, so let's go back, let's remove this. Let's remove that and let's go back to this idea that when I press the game pad, I'm creating a local player. So the issue here is if I press play, every time I push that button, it generates a new player. And I think if I actually move off, no, it's maxing out at four. So there's no way in this script that I've built for this to do a check and to stop replicating, unless we use this variable I created of p2 spawn and have it do a check. So after I create the local player, I am going to set p2 spawn, right? And it's actually easier for me to just drag that in from over here and say set, connect those pins and set this to true because now there is a player. And then here I'm gonna have a branch and that branch is going to ask is player two spawn true or false? And if it's false, create something and then set it to true. And then I'm gonna pull in the player two spawn and say, get this condition. 
and plug it in there. Okay, let's make this a little bigger for a second, take a quick peek at it. So when gamepad special rate is pressed, we check what the value of P2 spawn is. If P2 spawn is false, we create a new player and then we set the variable for true. And now it's true, anytime I press the special gamepad again, this branch will say that it's true and nothing will happen. Okay, here we are. I'm gonna press the button. It's creating a second player. There we go. And I now have the ability to control both of them independently. And we have our multiplayer local game up and running. Uh, I think that's good for a first step on this tutorial. I'll come right back with another tutorial about how to color code the players so that you can tell the difference between the two. Thanks for joining and please enjoy the rest of the series.